Hiya, how you doing? Jimmy here. Well, the bulkhead's in, the shower's in, the seat's in. So it's time to put the van back together. So in this video, I'm going to show you all about LPG. How to fit the locker, how to fit the hob, and everything I know about LPG. Right, what we're going to do now, I think seeing as the bulkhead is in now, the uh, seating is in and shower is in now, I think we can probably put the kitchen and bed back in because they were only removed to give me room to do the other jobs. But they were removed in October, which is nearly nine months ago now. And um, off the top of my head, I can't remember how they fit in and which order they need to go back in. So I th we will crack on putting the kitchen and the bed back in. Well, when I originally installed the bed and kitchen, I wasn't doing YouTube. So there was no videos made of that. So we might get a chance to show you a bit now when I'm refitting them. Well, it's starting to come back to me very gradually. Um, I think the gas locker has to go in first. I could well be proved wrong later on, but uh, I think the gas locker has to go in first. Now, gas locker is a very iffy subject. It's uh, for obvious, obvious reasons, gas is very dangerous. A lot of um, camper van builders choose not to do their own gas, which you can understand. Um, I chose to go ahead and do my own, but I done research at the time, which was probably over a year, a year ago. And um, so I would highly recommend that you do your research because the regulations might have changed. Firstly, your locker can be made out of metal or wood. Uh, it doesn't have to be metal. This one is obviously wood, it's plywood. And it has to be identified. And you can buy these little stickers from caravan places. Uh, dead cheap but it has to be identified as LPG um, the locker has to be um, airtight um, for obvious reasons I had a magnet on this last year when it was in the van but it wasn't very strong and it kept when I was parked up it kept finding it open so I just put that on it doesn't look very professional, but it's hidden under the sink. It's never going to be seen. So as long as it does its job, that's all I'm bothered about. So as I say, and the door is removable. Um, LPG is heavier than air. So if you do have a leak, it drops to the bottom of the locker. So the locker door must not go all the way to the bottom. I think it's a minimum of six inches, but I've measured this, this is eight inches, so it might be a minimum of eight. As I said, you'd have to check. That is eight inches, but you, but you can't have your door going right to the bottom in case it, the gas seeps through the, uh, the gaps around the door. It also has to have a metal pipe to the regulator, and the metal pipe cannot have any joins in it must be one pipe um, which caused me a lot of problems because you'll see in a second this is a very intricate shape of, of pipe but um, so I've done this before I put it into the van um, and um, it's probably easier if I turn the camera around to show you this right like I was saying this metal pipe has to be one piece it's not allowed to have any joins in it so as you can probably see this is a, a, a quite an intricate shape um, there it bends through out the top I've put some rubber where it goes through the wood so it doesn't rub 
there and round and when it's inside underneath it's got these locating so it's screwed to the wall doesn't vibrate round and that's the regulator and on a permanently fixed appliance i.e not a mobile barbecue or something like that if this is a permanent fixture in your van you must have the truma regulator which is this one and it has to be secured it can't be just flopping around and it has to be inside the gas locker it has to be located inside the gas locker comes around and the gas bottle is locates into the, the brackets there and there's a, a, a webbing strap keeps it in place but also see that there is a vent in the bottom called a dropout vent and this is as i say is because lpg is heavier than air so if you have a leak inside this box it drops through the the dropout vent and that vent goes to the outside of your van i'll show you in a second where it goes and i don't know if you can see there's two holes in there that's how it is fixed to the wall um, and this is where it stays in the van and those two holes i've just shown you that is those two holes there and that keeps it bolted to the back of of the um the sink unit and there is the dropout valve that one is for the locker and you must have a second one make sure that when you're fitting your dropout vent in your kitchen unit try and put it directly below the connection between the copper pipe and your appliance that way any leaking gas will drop straight down and straight out the dropout vent so it's a bit complicated but gas is very dangerous so you've got to be on the safe side if you're not sure of what you're doing, I recommend you don't do it. Get a professional to do it for you. And if you do do it and would like it checked, there is companies that do that. Um, it's called an inhabitant's certificate, I think. Uh, but again, I might be wrong. So if you are going to do your own, do your research and check up because things may have changed since I've done mine. There you go. As soon as I turned the camera off, I remembered something I didn't say. So, um, what I was going to say, what I forgot to mention was, the mic's getting tangled up. The regulator, this one, has to be located above the top of the bottle, above the height of the outlet on the bottle. It has to be higher than that, and it has to be a gradual um decline in the pipe it can't have a loop and it can't go down and then up again like that because then the gas would lie in the bottom of the pipe that's i think that's what the reason is but it hasn't got to have any i don't know what the word is um a valley in the in the pipe it has to be a gradual sloping down and a good habit to get into me and Teb and deb um i've got into this habit now and it's an like instinct now when we cook in the van or use the uh, the gas in the van it's got two cutoffs two taps you can turn it off from there which is the bit that goes on top of the gas bottle and there's a second tap on the regulator the yellow um tap so you've got two means of turning turning the gas off now we always have the gas turned off we turn it on do whatever whatever it is we have to do and if it's cooking before we even dish the food out anything we turn the gas off at both taps so that's just a safety precaution safety net and uh, it's a good habit to get into i would recommend you do that just another couple of things it's all starting to come back to me on the safety habit side of things never leave your gas unattended um, this actually happened to me and Deb Deb was cooking one day and uh, I didn't realize and I opened the back doors 
and it causes a wind tunnel through the van and that could either blow the flame into something or can blow the flame out. Now I know there's a safety valve, if the flame goes out it cuts the, the valve off, but just in case that doesn't work, um, it's always safe, better to be safe than sorry, it's a little safety net. So we never leave the gas unattended for a second while we've got um, the gas on and using it. Thought of something else. And firstly, I've looked at the footage I've just taken and uh, something I said, I think is probably gonna confuse everybody. So can I just clarify something? The regulator has to be mounted above the outlet of the bottle, which is true enough. The pipe has to have a gradual decline into the, um, from the regulator to the, the bottle. Again, which is true. I said it didn't have to have any dips in it. Now the pipe I'm talking about is the rubber pipe, not the metal one. Because I looked at the footage and I thought people would be saying, look at that metal pipe, it's got a U, a U in it. When it comes out the reg, there's a U bend in it. That's okay, it's not that pipe I was talking about. It's the rubber pipe between the bottle and the regulator. That has to be a steady decline. And it's not gonna trap gas in it. Well, it is, but it's, it's the LPG, the liquid part. It's the liquid part of the gas that it could trap if there was a U bend in it, not air gas. Um, have I made that worse? I probably have. Another thing is, if you're gonna do your own, this is this is good stuff. It's um, sealer for the joints of the gas pipes. Put it around the olive of the pipe before you tighten it up. And um, it's made for all types of gas. So that's good to use while you're fitting the pipes. And when you finish fitting the pipes, you turn the gas on so the pipes are pressurized. But before you ignite it, check for leaks. So you spray this over the joints of the pipes and if there's a leak bubbles will form it's just like soapy water but but it's proper stuff it's that's what it's meant for so use that when you're checking for leaks after you've fitted them and use that for while you're fitting them right i'll get on with something else well, the pipe's not all connected yet, but there's something I'm just going to show you because I won't be able to show you when once it's all back in because it's in an awkward place. As I say, the pipes aren't connected yet. They're still loose so that I can position them easier when I put the sink and hob in. But I just wanted to show that the copper pipe is uh, secured to the side of the kitchen unit. Because uh, you, when the the sink and hob unit is in, that will probably be hard to see. But it is secured. Very, very awkward to get to. Um, I didn't film it because uh, I didn't want all the swearing to go out on YouTube. Well, I've got the sink and hob unit down from upstairs. Um, and I've spent the last two hours preparing it. Um, well, probably one hour of that was trying to find the screws, but um, I've had to scrape all the old sealer off and um, get all the edges nice and clean and the new seal on. And I've decided to um, seal the edges of the work surface where the sink goes into. Uh, it was sealed when I originally fitted the sink, but um, I thought, why not when it's out? So this time, I can't remember what I sealed it with last time, but this time I want to seal it with PVA glue, water down, um, I think it's about four to one with water, but I've made it a bit on the thick side because uh, well, I don't think it'll do any harm. <laughs> and my brush, brush has just felt a bit so I'm going to have to do it with a little brush 
Um, so I'll do that and then I think I'll call it a day for the day and uh, give the PVA time to dry. Hi, I'm really sorry for this interruption. I've just got a fault on the next clip and I thought it best to explain. I'll keep it as brief as I can. What it is when we're trying to play the um, the clip back is I'm getting a, a notification saying the file is corrupt. I don't know what that means. Um, it plays on the computer, but it won't go into the editing suite. So what I've done is I've had to play it on the computer, film the computer, and then use that film to edit. Now we did lose a little bit, but I don't think it was much. What I was saying was, because I didn't want to give you wrong information, I wanted to um, check um, in a little jotter that I've got at home. Every time I do any research, I put my notes in the, the jotter. And um, I just referred back to that, so that I was sure I was telling you the right um information that's what i was saying when it went skew with so um sorry for the interruption i just thought i better explain well back to do a bit more on this campervan rebuild but it was really bugging me the, yesterday though when i couldn't remember half the things i wanted to say um so what i did was i've got a little jot out at home that i put everything campervan in in it in memory and I can tell you a bit more about LPG LPG stands for liquefied petroleum gas there's two main types butane and propane butane butane is in a blue bottle uh, propane is in a red bottle and um, it's stored in the bottle under pressure, which makes it liquid. And when the pressure is taken off the, the liquid, it turns into gas. And that's usable for your heating, your barbecue, your cooking. So that's what it is. But back pre-2003, there was a bit of a different setup. What you had in back then was the regulators were different. You had one regulator for butane and one for propane. And they screwed directly into the bottle. The regulators that screw directly into the bottles, the older type ones, they're, um, one of them is a left-hand thread. I think it's the propane is a left-hand thread so that you can't put a propane reg into a butane bottle or a butane reg into a propane bottle. And then because the regulator's job is to reduce the pressure, so the pipe after the regulator wasn't high pressure anymore. So you could use an ordinary pipe with a jubilee clip onto whatever appliance you are using. Now, as I say, in 2003, they replaced that because some people used to carry both and they had to keep all these regulators. So they changed it to uh, a different system now. So if you've got um, a portable barbecue, um, something like that, you may well still have the old type regulators on. But if it's a permanent fixture in your van, you have to have the Truma type. Now, yesterday I said it was a Truma. I don't know if they're the only ones that make it. I think they probably the only make the supplier hard when I bought mine doesn't have to be a Truma one as long as it's a one that's fitted to the wall in an upright position. Um, I think Truma is the, the best known one. Um, and then your rubber pipe out of your tank, uh, bottle to the regulator is still under very high pressure. So it has to be a purpose built hose and it has to be crimped. You can't put it on with 
dual eclipse anymore. Has to be the proper one for the job. And um, the regulators now, the Truma type regulator, can be used on propane or butane. But the pipes are different. So instead of having to change the regulator, now we have to change the pipe. One for butane, one for propane. And, and the reason you have to have a steady decline from the reg to the bottle is so that you don't get liquid lying in, in the pipe. Now it's not the liquid gas either. It's liquid, um, probably um, condensation. Because when they brought the new system in, they uh, were finding there was an oily substance that was being drawn through and it was sometimes in extreme cases blocking the regulator and sometimes the appliances. But when they had it all checked out, as I say, it was an oily substance and I think it was caused by condensation. So now I think you can get water traps as well, but I think if you had to have the steady decline in the pipe without any dips, uh, any liquid in the pipe just goes back into the bottle. That's why you don't have to have a, um, a valley in the pipe. How bupane and propane work is they are stored on the high pressure in a, a bottle or a tank. Um, most people can't on to have it in a bottle and it's high pressure. So it's in a liquid form. Now when you release the pressure, the liquid turns into a gas. And that's how it works so um, that's called venting so when you vent the gas the liquid gas it becomes gas gas air gas and um, if you can't get your head around that and you and you still sort of don't know what I mean probably because I'm not explaining it very well but you still might not know so I've got a couple of examples that uh, might make it easier for you to understand if you get a lemonade bottle, a one that hasn't been opened yet, especially one that's been bumped around in the car on the way home from the shop, and you look at the lemonade bottle, it's just clear liquid in the bottle. If you crack the top off quickly, what happens? Psh, all the air bubbles form. That's exactly the same. That's what happens. That's venting the lemonade. Um, and that's what's happening with your LPG. Also, if you've ever heard of a diver getting the bends, that's the same as well. When a diver's at the bottom of the sea, his body, because of the water, is under pressure. And all the nitrogen in the oxygen that he's breathing, the air that he's breathing, I should say, turns to a solution, liquid. And if a diver comes up too quickly, which in effect is taking the pressure off his body, same as taking the top off a lemonade bottle, the nitrogen comes back into his bloodstream in the form of bubbles, the bends. So what's the difference between propane and butane? They're very similar and you can use both in your camper van. Um, I can think of four differences. First difference, colour of um, container, butane is in a blue bottle, propane is in a red bottle. Cost. Propane is slightly dearer than butane and pressure. Propane is a slightly higher pressure than butane. Now the main reason is the temperature, the working temperature, the temperature that it vents, i.e. the temperature that it turns from liquid into gas. Butane stops working at between zero degrees and minus five degrees Celsius. Whereas propane will keep working till minus 40, 45 degrees. So it depends on which sort of camping you're going to do. If you're going to be camping in the winter when it's below freezing, you need propane. Me, no chance. I'll be in my bed. So I stick with butane, the blue bottle. The blue bottle. <laughs> oh dear me. So yeah, so right. I've talked enough. I'll start 
doing some more of this rebuild. Okay, the sink unit, hub unit, is in now. Pipes are connected um, with the um, sealing compound. Um, I haven't sprayed them to check for leaks yet. Um, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to turn the camera around and uh, show you what I've done up there now. I didn't film it because it was a bit tricky. Um, it was up the back, some of it was up the back of the sink and um, I would have been on forever. So I'll show you now. Right, here we go. Um, I hoovered the dust off the top in case it got into the jets and um, given it a wipe. This time I've put it on dry. Last time I uh, I sealed it and makes a hell of a mess and uh, it took me over an hour to scrape all the sealer off this time. So I've got a new seal and um, it's a real good fit so uh, this time I'm just going to put it on dry and obviously keep an eye open for any leaks inside but it's fitting very well all the way around um, it fits through these um, location uh, screws the six of them and then a rubber bung goes in to stop the lid from slamming when you put them down the tap comes up a water system is not connected yet so I can't show you the tap working um, but we're concentrating on the gas at the minute and here is the um, I'm going to get a torch so you can see there is the uh, the pipe connected under there now when you're doing this make sure that you get the pipe straight so that you get the uh the nut on straight because you last thing you want is to cross thread it um you'll be right in in the the cloths if you um if you if you do that so that you can see the compound coming out the side a little bit so I've put that in and um if you don't know what i mean by cross threading it if you put it on cockeyed and uh, it'll chew the threads up and you'll damage all the threads so be very careful that you don't do that it's a bit sometimes a bit tricky because it sometimes looks straight um but it, it but the nut won't go on so don't be tempted to force it on with a spanner the nut should start quite a few turns by hand before you put a spanner on it and this bit i don't know this is going to be hard this bit here has got a the body of the regulator has got a hex cut on it that's to fit a spanner on it because don't try and put a spanner on it and just pull that you might end up breaking the bracket so keep the reg steady with that with that spanner and tighten the nut with another spanner there we go and it's it's all clipped clipped in above there um, so all right what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit the bottle and then I'm going to spray the joints and check for leaks. So I'll try and show you that. Right, you'll have to excuse the shaky camera work because this should have been done by somebody with three hands. Because it's very awkward to hold the torch, the camera and the, uh, the spray. But I'll just spray the joint, give it a good spray. Spray this one. I'll spray the top one as well, just to be on the safe side. <coughs> Boy, it's got a bit of a smell. I can't <coughs> get onto that one. <coughs> Catches your throat a bit. I'm going to spray on there as well. Make sure that, that one's not leaking. And then turn the gas on. And that one's already on. Okay. 
Now we check for leaks. For bubbles. <coughs> Can't see any bubbles. Right, moment of truth. We'll give it a try. Um, can't remember how you do this now. Um, Right, moment of truth, we'll give it a try. Um, can't remember how you do this now. Uh, there you go. That one on. There you go. That's it. Gas is wrong, working back. Okay, that's about it for this one. I uh, I was gonna film um, doing the water as well, but I rubbed it on so much, and I haven't been keeping track of how long I've been on. So this video may well be a very long one. So um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, and until the next time, you take care. Thanks for watching.